So, pledge to Marvel United Multiverse, and now you got to wait about a year plus to get your pledge. And this is your first Kickstarter in the Marvel United line. Didn't do the other two Kickstarters whatsoever. So now you got to wait a year to get any kind of content. At least the Kickstarter. Go into Amazon. You uh, take a look and search for uh, Marvel United. And this comes up for probably somewhere between $10 and $15. And you think, should I get it? And so with that said, this is going to be an informative video for you. Uh, to let you know whether or not you should be uh, purchasing this, I guess. I'm just going to go over what the components are. You can make the decision on your own. But I am Eric. This is Rockshire Gaming, and today we're going to be doing an unboxing of Marvel United, the core game. All right, so as I said in that terrible intro, uh, this is the core box for Marvel United, just Marvel United, not Marvel United X-Men Spider-Verse, uh, Multiverse, uh, Omniverse, uh, Spider-Geddon, uh, Sinister Six, any of that. This is just baseline Marvel United. Um, this is the main game. This is the one that on Kickstarter we all paid, uh, what was it, $60 for the base game if you got this. Now, granted, that $60 got you this and that box right there, if you can see it, um, at the very minimum. But, um, yeah, so this is that. This same box that, like I said, I spent $60 on, you can probably get right now. I got this for $15 in tax. Uh, from uh, Amazon uh, so yeah there's that um, so let's go ahead and crack this open and first of all whoa mess that up go ahead and take a look at the cover of the box there's a lot of glare from the lights above so this is your box right here this is Marvel United you got Iron Man right front and center both Captains America and Marvel uh, we've got Black Widow we've got the Hulk we've got three villains we've got um, who's that? Ultron. We've got Red Skull and we've got Taskmaster who we do not have on the cover here and they're not on the sides of this copy. This is the main retail copy of the box. So this is going to also include Ant-Man, uh, Scott Lang and the Wasp. These two characters were not initially supposed to be in this game. It was supposed to originally be, um, they just weren't supposed to be in it. Uh, this was be the characters you see on the cover were going to be the ones we got. Uh, Ant-Man and Wasp were stretch goals during the campaign. And then some point afterward, they're like, hey, we're just going to add them into the base game for everybody. And everybody's like, cool, we're getting two stretch goal characters early if we got two-way of shipping. So let's take a look at the back of the box. You see Ant-Man and you see uh, the Wasp right there. Those are all the figures. This is an example of how they want you to uh, play the game copyright of 2020. It's about a three-year-old game at this point from the time it was on Kickstarter Two years old from when I actually made it to uh, People now actually no, it's about two and a half years because people were getting it in August September of 2020 for um, Gen Con so let us go ahead and Take a look not at a book, but inside this Box right here. Let's peel the plastic off and let's go ahead and do what we always do and throw the plastic away. All right, so this is Marvel United, a game by Eric Lang, Andrea Caravicio, art by Edward Newton. Uh, sorry if I mispronounced any of your names. Uh, so there is that. So we'll take a look and open up the box and put the box lid right there. And you get free content from Simon. You can go ahead if you want to and read that. I'm pretty sure the free content for this one is you mean FAQ, I believe, on the website for um, the entirety of Marvel United, rules, clarifications, that kind of thing. There's also going to be achievement lists. That's one of the things I'm actually debating on doing on the channel with gameplays. And if you guys want to see more gameplays outside of the Fantastic Four ones we've already done, Please let me know in the comments. Um, I know Marvel United Multiverse is over as far as the campaign goes, but I still want to bring more Marvel United content to the channel mixed with everything else I want to do. Um, but if you guys want to see more gameplay, let me know outside of the unboxings and possibly some reviews and other stuff. But that is going to be free content right there. Um, oh, that's what I was going to say, achievement list. So basically with this game and 
all the other content, they basically uh, Simon's basically created um, uh, achievements for the game, kind of like Xbox achievements or whatnot. Uh, that basically say you do you beat the scenarios in these ways. Um, you can uh, you check basically you're checking off stuff. You know, kind of honor system kind of thing. But this is not important to this unboxing. So we've got our rule book here in the Queen's English or the King's English now. Um, and so we open her up and it gives a table of contents, overview of the game. It is a two four player cooperative game where you are trying to thwart the master plan of the villain. Here are all the components. You've got your, uh, what is it now? Uh, seven heroes and your three villains, 10 figures in total. You've got your eight locations, your mission cards, mission, uh, mission guide, challenge cards, rule book, which we have the villain tracker, uh, and various tokens on the bottom, all the cards and dashboards and all that stuff. This is gonna be the general rules of how to set the game up between the threat cards and everything. They do want you to set it up at, to a point. They want you to set up the game in this way, in this circle pattern. Um, potentially you could set it up a different way. You would just have to somehow identify what um, locations are um, adjacent to each other because there's a lot of the villains moving around like so many spaces and they have to go on a circular path and whatnot. So you really can't deviate from this. If you want to, you can try. Um, you know, either lining up three locations, two on top, two on the bottom, and then putting the dashboard in a different spot. Uh, and then just, you know, however you want to do it. But that's basically the general way of they want you to set up the game. Uh, conditions for winning and losing. Basically, heroes win if they beat the villain. Um, villains win if their uh, villainous plot is ever finished. Uh, they can't draw any more Master Clan cards. And a hero starts to uh, any hero starts their turn with no cards, both in their deck and in their hands so those are all that goes over the villain's turn what happens there We've got the hero's turn what happens there resolving actions um uh, what all the different actions do the turn sequence itself uh the shield solo mode it's the original solo mode for the game what happens with the challenges heroes taking damage additional rules all that kind of stuff and then I believe a rule summary on the back. So that is going to be the rule book for Marvel United. Then we get into the tokens. Um, you have two trays of tokens. The top tray right here is going to have all of your thugs. Now with that said, on the other side, they are civilians. So those uh, tokens are double sided. If you, I know we keep talking about other stuff in the game, but this is kind of uh, being informative. If you do get your hands on the plastic tokens that are offered sometimes during the Kickstarter, um, those are also double sided as well with thug on one side and civilian on the other side. So that's pretty cool. Then you got your crisis tokens, which are used for different things throughout all the different, um, uh, villains, Dif different villains use crisis tokens for different effects. Either crisis tokens go on you, the crisis tokens go on the villain, the crisis tokens go on the locations. They go in different spots and have a different effect depending on which villain you're fighting. So, um, you also have all your health right there and then the other tray is going to have a couple more health right there but primarily your wiles your attacks your movement tokens and all of the uh, heroic action tokens there are more heroic action tokens because they're assuming you're going to be there's a lot of threat cards that you're placing the tokens onto it's not just getting them to yourself so there is that right there and then they have a plastic insert covering up the figure so they don't move around, which I do appreciate. Um, the one thing I do like about the Marvel United tray as opposed to some other games, um, the main game I'm comparing it to in this case would be Power Rangers. Um, these characters don't snap into the trays. As you can see, as I'm putting Hulk back in there, Ultron is moving around. Um, Power Rangers has it to where the plastic trays actually grab on in most cases to the figure and snap on um, with just a generic like tray that or cover that goes over the tray. Though it's nice for um, the figures unpainted, and that game does a pretty good job of color coding all the different Rangers and everything. Um, if you're a painter, I always worry about 
painting and um, the uh, points in the plastic that grab the figure, removing the paint. With this, I'm not as worried about it. Uh, we'll see once I start painting these. Um, but we have, like I said, it's all, um, uh, like I said, they're, they're very loose in this tray. So next thing I'm going to go through is the locations. Now, the locations are on a thinner card stock. And one of the things I will make a complaint about with this game, uh, it's not any kind of deal breaker whatsoever, but this is a brand new game. It has been sitting in my house for a couple of days now. Um, and you can already see it's kind of warped. Now, again, this is been around for a while. My one problem with the game with the locations is that the location cards do for some reason seem to curl. Um, and um, that's why I always suggest to people, if you can get them, get the cardboard locations, the thicker cardboard locations that were offered during the various Kickstarters, um, just because they're not gonna have the same problem and um, you won't have to really worry about the, the, the cards curling like that. So. Got our locations here of Avengers Tower, Stark Labs, uh, Central Park, the ooh, Shield Headquarters, Shield Headquarters, that's them. Um, the Shield Helicarrier. Let's see, Time Square, New York Police Headquarters, and Avengers Mansion. Um, this is a different Avengers Mansion than the one um, that's in. The Thanos expansion, the Infinity Gauntlet. So, um, so there is that right there. We'll move this band out of the way. Then we will get to uh, the dashboards here. Actually, yeah. Let me go ahead just because I it's time. Put that there. This is the dashboards for you have Red Skull. Ultron and Taskmaster. These are going to be the three villains that come with the base game and they are all going to have um, a different effect, a different mission. It's not like they're kind of playing the same way. Um, for example, Red Skull here uses his villainous plot, which I think he's the only one of the three that actually, oh, um, no, Taskmaster is the only one of the three that doesn't have a villainous plot. Red Skull and Ultron do. His villainous plot is that he is filling up his fear track and somewhere in here is, yep, it's right here, um, is the blue, uh, this blue cube right here that he uses. It starts here like that at zero. And then as his overflow happens and he can't put um, a civilian down in the location for some reason, you move the fear track over by however many uh, tokens that can't go through. Also, when he bams, he just moves the fear track by two. Um, so yeah, he is basically playing until he fills up the fear track. Ultron is the next one. He basically um, is going to the point where with Red Skull, if you can't put a token down in that location, you fill up the fear track. With Ultron, if you can't put a, a, figure to, or a token down a location, it goes to the next clockwise location. He wins if there's no places to put thugs or civilians. And then Taskmaster, his big thing is going to be, um, he's basically trying to run down the clock. He's trying to, uh, he's got a bunch of things in here that will force him to play master playing cards face down and stuff like that. Um, and he is basically just trying to get to the end of his um, deck and win the game that way. So like I said, they play a little bit different depending on which villain you're fighting. And again, if you are getting any additional content, um, and we'll kind of go over it a little bit with some of the expansions. Uh, we've already looked at the, um, the stretch goal exclusive boxes and whatnot. And you can kind of see in those that the villains just work different. Every single one of them works differently. Some have similar mechanics just because there's only so many mechanics you can introduce. Um, but even as the new Kickstarters and everything roll on, um, they uh, introduce new mechanics. I mean, for example, I think Lizard in the multiverse campaign has it to where he's not even playing on locations. He's um, uh, using sewer tiles in between locations to do all his stuff. So this is the villain. Uh, this is the mission guide. The uh, villain dashboard goes up here. And then down here, you're going to have your mission cards, which are going to be in these two piles right here. Um, 
that you're playing tokens on and um, once you unlock them it unlocks the ability to do other various things in the game so there is that the next thing we've got here is going to be the cards there are two decks of cards and i would like to say simon if you're listening you did it in the x-men campaign i was very happy with i don't understand the need i i to a point i understand that yes you're going to be taking these tokens out and putting them in these um wells for the most part that are going to sit here here and then possibly here i guess um but and that goes there but i honestly just don't know why they just didn't make these wells go all the way down um the sleeved cards if you are someone who sleeves cards sleeve cards will uh sleeves will fit on these cards and the cards will fit in the sleeves or in the wells you can see how i got a lot of wiggle right in here to um accommodate sleeved cards the problem is you have to really mash them down and this tray is shinier but i think it's a little bit lighter plastic or a thinner plastic than the main game so it possibly will crack more um but um but yeah the sleeve cards are a tight fit in this tray um i would probably suggest if you want to sleeve your cards possibly looking into replacing the tray with some foam or something like that especially if you're going to be painting but um to each his own but there are the cards for the game there i don't know why i paused um you know why because i'm trying to find if there is a point on here to open these cards i don't see one <laughs> well that's what we have enough all right so all right so like i said these uh this is a second copy of a game for me so i um, not sure exactly what i'm going to use these cards for i mean i guess i can beef up the uh beef up the heroes a little bit and move their uh move one of the uh one of the special cards to what should i do move one of the special cards in from in my other deck if I wanted to do that to kind of make it more you know, online with X-Men, but that's probably going to happen. Um, so yeah, so this first package we have, I think, is all of the heroes. So uh, there's Captain America with all his various abilities. Um, he's going to have his leadership, which he's going to have a couple of those leadership cards are basically the ability he's going to do. The same thing on each one. It's just the token down here that he's going to have is going to be different. Um, depending on which one of the three cards you place. He's either going to give a, or have a uh, movement, a punch, or looks like a uh, heroic action. Then we got Black Widow. Well, let's take a look. She's got three interrogates, which are all the same card. So don't be confused on that if you open up yours. And she has three of the same card in there that is intentional. Some characters have three different um, three different uh, special ability cards. Some of them have the same one on each card. Uh, Iron Man, let's take a look at him. Well, Iron Man does have three different ones. Let's go with advanced combat analysis. Distribute two tokens uh, from the pool among any number of heroes. So there's him giving punches to people um, there. So that is example of his card let's see hulk just does a bunch of smashing i think all three of his are just hulk smash so that right there and then we got captain marvel with uh was it three copies of photon blast in there we got that and let's see let's go with ant-man um, he does, because he's a Kickstarter character, have three different characters. He's got Shrink, Grow, and Quantum Leap. Uh, not to be confused with the show. You do see on here, he does not have any actions on there. So if you do know the rules of the game, uh, cool. If you don't know the rules of the game, when I play this card, and then you play a card after me, what they call the storyline, um, you can use the action symbols in the bottom part of my card. This card does not have any action symbols, so you're not going to get those benefits um from that so swap this card with any of your face-up cards in the storyline this card becomes the one you played this turn with that said 
I'm stupid <laughs> if I actually read the card. With that said, that means that you will be able to, you, you know, you won't have to worry about this card, but there are some characters who do have the, uh, the missing uh, cards in the storyline. Now, with all that said, one of the things I do want to reiterate, or not reiterate, but make people aware of, is let me put these oops, put these cards back in some kind of order with this deck. Um, this copy is again a copy I got from Amazon. It is the normal, regular retail copy. The copy that I have comes with the wasp. Uh, and we will take a look at one of her cards. She's got shrink wings and energy projection. Um, there's copy of her wings right there. Um, if you happen to say you watch this video, you haven't gone on Amazon yet, and you happen to walk into a Walmart, and you're like, oh, look, they actually still have a copy of Marvel United. Oh, no, look, it's clearance for Lord knows how much. You will not be getting the Wasp cards in your deck. I'm sorry. Um, and unfortunately, she also, if you get the stretch goal box, she won't be in there. The only place, um, well, not the only place, the only place to get <clears throat> Wasp is in a core game purchased from somewhere that's not Walmart. Um, if you did purchase from Walmart, though, however, what you are going to be getting is um, the Hero Venom deck. This is my Hero Venom deck from the Kickstarter stretch goal box. If you have the Walmart copy and you are going to be getting the stretch goal box from the Kickstarter for Multiverse, you're going to end up having uh, two copies of Hero Venom. Sorry. Um, but yeah, here is Hero Venom's deck. Mine are sleeves. He's going to have his regeneration, tracking, and symbiont enhancement. Uh, thing with this card right here, just so you're clear, um, the, ones under, the symbols under symbiont enhancement are going to be just for Venom to use. Uh, the person next to the storyline will be able to use that punch. So... There is that, but for some reason, the Walmart copy of the game, the Walmart retail copy, I guess because they wanted to have some kind of a Spider-Man character out, um, decided to throw in the hero version of Venom in there instead of the Wasp. So, uh, yeah, if you got the Walmart version, you're gonna have to if you and you want Wasp, you're to complete your collection, you're gonna have to buy a, a regular retail version. So there's that. Um, with that, uh, we have the villain deck now. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. No change with the villains. Um, uh, they didn't throw in a different villain or anything like that. Everyone got the same three villains whoop, from the Kickstarter. If you did the Kickstarter, you went to retail, you went to Walmart, you went to wherever. Um, you all got the same exact cards. So, um, let's see, why aren't you... Go. Very close to cutting my own finger at that point. All right. All right. So these are the missions I mentioned earlier. You have rescue civilians, defeat thugs, and clear threats. Every time you rescue or defeat a thug, you put him on this card. Every time you def uh, rescue a civilian, you put him on this card. Every time you clear a threat card um, from the board off a location, you put the little purple um, token that is on the uh, location and you put it on here there's also a couple challenge modes you have moderate hard and heroic challenge moderate hard card challenge each player removes the single wild card um, from their hero deck hard challenge is every uh, every player removes the double wild card from their deck and then finally uh, heroic challenge each player removes the single and double wild card from their deck. Some characters, just so you know, are going to have more than one. Um, so I think you only choose one uh, of each if that is the case. So, uh, yes, you're going to have your three decks here. You're going to have Red Skull, you're going to have Ultron, and then you're going to have Taskmaster with their various um, cards. The cards that look like this here are going to be their threat card. That is the one that's going to go on the location. And in Taskmaster's case, you have to clear these three, um, or put three heroic action tokens 
on those locations in order to clear them. Taskmaster doesn't have any thugs. However, Ultron does. He has an Ultron clone that you see over here that he's got four health on the Ultron clone. You are going to have to fight the Ultron clone using punches and whittle down its health. Um, Let's see, Bob, Agent of Hydra, Madam Hydra, and Crossbones are all in uh, Red Skull's deck. We did get Crossbones in the new Kickstarter, and we got Bob, Agent of Hydra, in the Deadpool uh, box in the X-Men Kickstarter. Apparently, Madam Hydra still don't have a figure from her. I don't remember her being revealed at all, so we're still missing her. So, uh, but that is going to be the basis for the cards. I'm not going to go into fully into the master plan. Um, cards we will go through that because i am uh attempting like i said i want to get um some more gameplay videos done for marvel united i think to ease everybody into it we're going to start with marvel united one um get jake and james back over here or any other combination of people that uh are willing to come on the channel and embarrass themselves on youtube uh to um come on and we'll probably start again with the core box um, doing the villains for there. I've played the core box uh, numerous, numerous times um, just because of teaching people how to play. Uh, I've used this box quite a few times, these characters uh, quite a few times. Um, when compared to other uh, newer villains from the various other, uh, the original Kickstarter and the X-Men Kickstarter, sometimes these guys can be a little bit um, basic, more basic because this is the introductory um uh challenge but uh but yeah we uh it's still gonna be fun still want to give everybody a base so using this game for that or this box for that should be um uh, a-okay fun so let's go ahead since this is a game by simon let's go ahead and take a look at the cool minis now Let's go ahead and first we'll take a look at Black Widow. There she is. Right there. And then let's look at Mr. Stark. Uh, there is Tony right there with some cool blast effect on his face. I do like all the new Iron Mans we got in the uh, new Kickstarter. I think there's four new Iron characters iron patriot iron um iron heart uh, a new tony from the civil war box a uh, hulkbuster so that's pretty cool here's the og captain america figure holding a shield not throwing a shield or anything like that um i think the new one actually throws a shield so that's pretty cool then we got the hulk and there he is he is larger than the other characters but not by much um you can definitely tell this is early game sculpt and um though he is like i said a little bit bigger than captain america there it's not like he's like the imposing figure that he is in um uh uh, the movies, the car you know, comic books, all that stuff, even Marvel Crisis Protocol, the Hulk figures, um, uh, is a pretty big figure um, for that game. So then we have Carol right there, Captain Marvel. Then we've got Scott Lang, Ant Man. New movie coming out as of this recording. A new movie with him is coming out in three days. Um, there's that. And then we got, actually, let's stick with the heroes. We got Wasp, who, once again, is probably one of my favorite sculpts in this box, just like she kind of was in my Marvel Zombies Heroes Resistance. Um, she's one of my favorite sculpts from that one. Uh, let's see, you got Ultron here. This is another one I'm kind of excited about uh, figuring out how to... Trying to paint the metal without using metal paint. Because um, it is pretty simple with these, kind of just like slap on metal paint. I find that the metal paints, like the, the silvers, like those kind of colors, um, 
in some cases go on a little weird. Uh, it was just me. Maybe it's just how human this room can get. Um, airflow in here is not the best, unfortunately. Uh, like he says with all the cardboard behind him. So uh, there is red skull right there. And of the villains, probably my favorite. You got not Skeletor, but Taskmaster right there. Keep that there. And then you're saying again, but Eric, I bought mine from, uh, I want to buy mine from Walmart. I bought the Walmart copy, haven't opened it yet. What's that Venom look like? And glad you asked. Here he is. Right there, that if you bought the Walmart copy, that is going to be your heroic version of Venom. And technically, if you bought the Walmart version of the game and you still end up getting the season one stretch goal box from the new Multiverse Kickstarter, you're actually gonna have three, uh, three uh, Venoms in that one because you're gonna have the one from this box, you're gonna have the her heroic version again from the stretch goal box, and then there's the villain version uh, that's also in there. So, uh, yeah, so that is all the components for OG, no adjectives, Marvel United. Um, and I cannot wait to prime all these figures, go ahead and get them, um, uh, you know, painted up, see how, test them out some new uh, techniques. I also can't wait to start. Um, playing the game uh, more on camera, doing some videos of playthroughs of this. Um, trying to get one each of uh, the villains through here. Um, I think, like I said, it's like 30 something games right now to get through every hero with a four player game. Um, there's like 70 something different uh, villain combinations. Um, not villain combinations, but villain scenarios in the game. Again, not talking about like the mixed up. Uh, uh, Maxim Carnage Sinister Six thing that's like 5,000 different ways of playing that. Um, but like I said, the, I want to take this and try to do some more gameplay if you guys are interested in, in uh, seeing that. Um, but yeah, this is going to be Marvel United. So be on the lookout for all of that. Uh, please do not forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel. Did I say that right this time? Yes, I did. Uh, ring the notification bell, do whatever it is that you do to watch this uh, video here or this channel. And I thank you guys. You guys have a wonderful evening, day, afternoon, whatever time it is that you're watching this. And we'll see you in the next video.